and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today I decided to transplant my plant into a new pot and it gave me a great idea for a new drawing. Let's go inside and start a new drawing together. So what I was thinking about when I was planting my plant outside is that we could actually draw the Wally boot with the plant coming out of it. I mean, it's a very cool drawing, looks really nice, so I think it's something we could do together. Build that military boot with the earth inside and the plant popping out of it. And uh, let's begin right now with the basic foundation, so the basic shapes, to this drawing. There are a few ways we can begin. We can start with a oval shape here at the top, which represents where you would put your foot inside the boot. And then, of course, a cylindrical shape here, which falls into the foot area of the boot. Sort of like in this shape. We can also draw it in the other direction. Uh, we can have it facing left instead. So this is the basic shape of a boot, but then we can create another oval here, have that cylindrical shape again, and have it facing the other direction, such as like this. So the foot shape and going the other way. Now, I think we're gonna use this shape and use it facing left, but seen more from the top. Uh, we're gonna make a nice bigger circle here with a tapered cylindrical shape that goes into the boot shape here at the bottom with a nice space for the toes and going back up to that opening. There we go. All right, now our next step is to create the upper opening here of the boot. So we're gonna curve that in and there's a bit of a thickness here. And remember this, remember this is an old boot, so we need to put some lines and bends and things in there, make it look like it's worn out. So you can see here there's a straight line and. And then we're gonna add like a, a lip to that boot. It's made of leather and we need to reproduce that to a certain extent. Put a thickness here. And then I can use my new eraser, the one I showed you on the last video. And erase some of these parts out. Now if you're erasing by hand, no problem. Hit pause and I'll wait for you. All right, got rid of those lines we don't need. And then we're going to add the uh, bottom part of the boot here, so the sole, where the sole attaches to the boot. And then usually these boots have a heel, so we're gonna add the heel portion of the boot right here. Put a line there to reflect the thickness. And then we're going to draw the contour a little bit more. I think I'm gonna make this a bit bigger at the top, a little bit thicker lip. You can imagine there's a, a leather curl to the top of the boot. There we go. I'm gonna curve this around. So these are just foundation lines to begin with. Later on, we're going to make those darker. Or we're gonna add some folds here on the side. And we're gonna add a few teeth. This is how, you know, like crampons to the bottom of the boot here. This will allow whoever wears this boot to have some grip. And we'll add some to the back end here as well. Let's add also, uh, before we do that, we'll add some welded pieces. This is where the leather comes together on the front of the boot and on the heel. And we'll add some eyelets to let the uh, shoe uh, string to come through. Your shoelaces will go through these holes. And there should be a tongue, right? Uh, every boot and shoe has a tongue. Let me erase that line here. And then draw the tongue down to the throat of the boot over here. And that's hidden behind here, right? We can't see the tongue inside there. You could pull it out more if you want to. If you want to make your drawing slightly different, you can yank that tongue a little bit more outwards. Don't forget that the heel should have some teeth to it too. We're gonna add some holes to these eyelets. Tuck that back in over here a little bit. Yeah, that's starting to look like a boot. It's coming along really well. We're gonna fill this in in a nice dark shade to begin with. Get rid of this right here, we don't need that. All right, make the thickness to the tongue here and a little few, a bit of uh, bends, folds in the material. And then we're just gonna finish this top off here just a little bit, add a bit more worn out lines. Get rid of that, don't need that. 
All right, so I think we're going to add the earth now. And You know, remember when Wally grabs the plant from the refrigerator, he dumps it inside the boot, but it's not only the plant, the earth comes with it as well. So we're going to draw this plant popping out of the boot just like this. Make sure that line that you're drawing the sort of reverse S doesn't go off the page. You need to show a little bit of control here and make sure that S curve doesn't go right off the page. And we want to erase those lines that are coming through the plant now. Draw all the way up in one continuous line if you can. All right, I'm going to retrace some of these lines and add maybe a few eyelets first. There we go. All the way to the bottom. That's a good idea. That's what's fun about drawing is that you don't have to, you know, stick to a game plan. Once you have an idea, you can draw it along. But as you're moving along, that game plan can change. And that's what's great about drawing. Sometimes the, the finished product is a little bit more surprising than what you would expect. So here are some shoelaces, and some people would say, well, you know, this isn't realistic. This is not what shoelaces look like. Or they would say, how do you draw shoelaces? Where do you get your inspiration from to draw shoelaces? Well, each of us have shoes, I'm supposing. Uh, most of us have shoes then. Uh, <laughs> so what I do is I use a shoe, and you can see how the shoelaces go through the eyelets, and you can reproduce that in your drawing. Like, so you can see the same similarities, I guess, between the shoe and my drawing. And you can see that they go behind here and they go through. And you can loop it behind or on top. Uh, and that's what you do. You use things that are around the house um, to help with your drawing. So I'm going to add another shoelace back here. Going underneath and coming out. And to make this interesting, we're going to loop it. And loop the thickness and come back around and put that little metal piece at the end there. He hasn't lost it yet. Even though it's an old boot, he still has that portion at the end there. A lot of people ask me online and, and through email, um, do you use models when you draw? And the real answer is you have to. I'm not for this drawing because I'm pretty, you know, it's pretty simple to draw a boot for me at this point. But how many boots did I have to draw to be able to draw this boot automatically? Tons and tons of boots. So when I went to university, I had a drawing class, or well, many drawing classes, but one of them was twice a week, four hours a week. And um, as I color this section here of the boot, I'll continue my story. But what we want to do here is the light is coming from the left back side of the boot. So up to this portion here, this is the, you know, like a stitch line. All of that will be nice and dark. And as we move our weight towards the right, we're going to make it lighter and lighter. So we're going to press less on our pencil. So as I was saying, I had a class in university, which was four hours, twice a week. So eight hours of drawing. And that class had a model in there for the whole four hour period. So eight hours a week, I was drawing a model. A person would come in, sit down, take a pose, and we'd have to draw that person. And the way it would work is we would start with a 30 second drawing, then it would move up to a one minute drawing, five minute drawing, 20 minute drawing, and then three hours worth of drawing this pose. So constantly we would draw models, 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 models for a whole session, for a whole year, essentially. So of course now drawing the human body for me is easy because I've seen it and I've reproduced it a whole bunch of times. So those of you out there that would like to reproduce things without looking at them, I'm sorry to say it's quite impossible. As we color the earth here, I'll keep explaining that. When you want to draw an airplane, and I say, all right guys, let's draw an airplane, and you've never seen an airplane before, how are you going to draw it? It's impossible to do so. So what you want to do is plop an airplane in front of you, draw the airplane. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a model or anything like that. It can actually be online. Get yourself an image, a picture, and draw that airplane out. And once you've drawn it three, four, five times, then you can probably draw an airplane on your own. It might not be identical, it might not have all the details, but at least you'll have a better understanding of how airplanes are made. And it's the same thing with this boot and the shade here that we're gonna apply that. Plant uh, here, this drop shadow or cast shadow. And we're gonna add a few little dirt bits and pieces in here. We need to show that the dirt is, you know, individual granules coming together, just like this. 
So yeah, anyway, so do I use models? Of course I do. If somebody asks me to draw a Shih Tzu and I've never drawn a Shih Tzu before, well, of course I'm gonna go online and look at some Shih Tzu videos and um, watch, look at some pictures and make a little you know, montage of things that I wanna draw together. Maybe I won't draw exactly what I see. I'll draw a, uh, a form of it or a, a different uh, ver a version of it. Uh, but, you know, at first you really need to know what you're drawing and it's impossible to do it without uh, visual aid. So what I would recommend is sit around your house, grab something, put it in the sunlight uh, in an interesting angle. I think sun, the sun at 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon is awesome because it's a little bit lower, especially in the spring and the fall. And you've got this really nice cast shadow. And you should draw that stuff. Draw a glass, draw a shoe, draw anything. And you get used to drawing these things and later on you won't need models as much anymore as I'm now not requiring a model for this boot. Well, I, I know the overall look of a boot in the first place, so... Um, and I've drawn a bunch of times. But yeah, this Wally -E boot is pretty cool. I like the concept of having a plant growing out of it. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to retrace the outline of the boot once I've colored this in. So we're going to color this entire boot in one tone. Uh, but later on, the whole right side, or the side closest to us, will be darkened because the light will not be able to illuminate that section of the boot. That's pretty good. There we go. Same shade throughout. And we can, you know, shade across that shoelace. It doesn't really matter. This sole section, the heavy rubber here at the bottom, needs to be darker. You can imagine that as a darker material color. Don't forget to retrace around your teeth, the cleats, and the heel. Same thing here, the little cleats back in there. Give the uh, wearer better traction. Make this nice and dark under there. Actually, maybe it should have been light, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Color in these eyelets, nice and dark inside there. All right, shoelace is coming out of there. Trace that nice line, one continuous line if you can do it. If you can't, it's okay to give little strokes, pencil strokes to that line, but I'm gonna try that one shot, boom. And then of course the other end here. Let's not forget that bit. Okay, redraw that lip line here that's missing. And we're going to color in the tongue. Now the tongue, remember the light is coming from the top left, and so the back end here, the right end of the tongue needs to be darker. And within this little triangular piece here, this needs to be nice and dark. I don't think the light would be able to fit in there. This section here needs to be dark, and we're going to use a gradient format, so going lighter as we move away, just like that. Amazing, look at that. It's kind of looking like 3D. That's our trick, our, our goal as, a, as a, an illustrator in some cases to make things look more realistic or look like they're coming off the page. And so, you know, we're making a flat surface, not flat anymore. It's all a trompe l'oeil. We're tricking your eye to think that it's actually 3D. This section back here needs to be dark, and as we're moving away, make it a little bit um, lighter, brighter. But we need to erase the line here for the shoelace. Get that out of there. All right. So we're going to color here, add some shading to the side of the lip of the boot. We can imagine that there's a bit of shading on this end all the way around. Let's start. A little bit of here as well, shading this end, making sure to keep a little bit of white to the top of that. The top portion of the slip needs to be white and the bottom portion needs to be gray or dark. Um, so we're going to do that all the way up. Color that in and come all the way around the other way. So, you know, some purists will say that this is not the original 
uh, Wally boot, and they would be right. I'm just doing this off the top of my head, and you know, I'm just drawing a boot the way I would see a boot, and um, but that's fine. This is my drawing, so I don't really care what people think of my about my drawing. You know, I'm drawing this to have fun and to spend time creating something using my imagination to some extent. I mean, I didn't invent this, but um, and so I'm just having fun drawing. And if people like the drawing, then hey, great, that's just a plus. If they don't like it, well, that's their point of view, and it shouldn't affect me. I've, I've enjoyed myself drawing this and helping some of you guys out there learn how to draw a boot as well. So I'm saying, all I'm saying is, you know, don't worry about what people think about your drawing. As long as you're having fun drawing this stuff, then that's all that counts. All right, we'll add some detail here to the shoestrings or to the shoelaces. There we go. Uh, I've been getting some special requests. Um, and with more than 60,000 viewers now on YouTube, or 60,000 subscribers, it's impossible for me to answer all of your requests. I'm terribly sorry. Um, I mean, I'm happy about having all of you guys watching and following along. I really appreciate it. But it's, you know, imagine everybody asking for drawings. I just can't follow that anymore. So I hope these drawings are sufficient to you and help you out. Um, furthermore, a lot of people are asking for things that I've already drawn. So please go to my channel and um, check out the drawings that are already there. Some people are asking me for Superman, I've drawn them already. Asking me for Spider-Man, I've drawn them already. Uh, Wally and so on, they're already up there. So go to, the, to my channel. If you're watching this video now, my name is below it. Just click on it and it will bring you to my channel and you'll be able to see what I've drawn already. So please check that stuff out. Chances are they're already there and you can follow along. The other thing I want to talk about is that a human being is a human being. So once you've learned how to draw the human body, like I've learned a while ago and now I can draw the body in any form, any pose, it doesn't really matter. But the idea is Superman is Superman because of his suit, not because of his body shape. Well, somewhat his body shape, but every human being has the same kind of body shape. So. If you were to want to learn how to draw, I've got a lot of people saying, hey, why don't you draw a Deadpool? Okay, I could draw a Deadpool, but I already have Superman, Batman, Daredevil, you know, Spider-Man, and so on. So if you were to look at one of these characters, draw Daredevil, and you can replace the Daredevil suit with the Deadpool suit, and you end up with a Deadpool. So once you've drawn the human body, uh, you can draw any superhuman person that you want. Any female, male, doesn't really matter. If to help you out, to make things more easy for you, you can get yourselves one of those wooden characters that you can pose in any pose that you like, and then you can draw those out and then draw any uh, suit on top of that. And I think that's the trick here. Like I'm drawing these definitely to help you out and I want to help you for sure, but I can't support everybody at once. That's impossible. Uh, there are just too many of you now. And, and I really appreciate, I, I need you to understand, I really appreciate you guys watching and following along but it's now impossible for me to do specific drawings for everyone out there. I, there are just not enough of me <laughs> to, to do that. So check out one of my existing videos and adapt it to the character you'd like to draw or to the object you'd like to draw. But you know, once you've drawn a human being and I've drawn a bunch here on my YouTube, cha YouTube channel, um, just pick one out and then change the costume. Now eventually, who knows, we might get to drawing Deadpool, but I hope you understand my point here. All right, while we color the side of this boot, making it nice and dark, this is the dark side of the boot. It's like the dark side of the moon. And we're going to put a bit more darkness to the sole of the boot here. The rubbery, sticky side of the boot gives us traction while we walk. Can't really see much here. I'm blocking it. Pardon me. I'm just going to color that, leaving a little bit of a white edge at the top of it. Okay, and we're going to do that all the way. Nice and dark. You'll learn as well as we uh, draw and color here that one part of your pencil will flatten out, or the, the part of the uh, graphite will flatten out, and that's the best side to color with. And then the pointy side is the side that uh, allows us to make nice, really thin, dark lines. But at the moment, I'm using the flat side to my uh, lead, and it's allowing me to color a lot easier than having that really thin, uh, fine point. 
throw this in. Make sure to do that portion too. It's back there. All right, we're gonna add a few lines to our shoelace. Make that detach from the main portion of it. That's it. All right. So I think what we can do now is uh, add a bit more detail to this line over here. I'm happy with that line, so I'm going to press on it, set it in stone if you like. Color this in a little bit, make it detach from the boot. Add a bit more detail here, more shading. I'm just at this point I'm just going with the flow, looking at my drawing and figuring out where I would like to put stuff, where I would like to add additional lines and, and darkening that point. Like an over around lip here. Maybe adding a bit more darker shade to the toe. And I'm I'm using a slightly different angle so that I can uh, color this in and make it a bit darker. Slightly different angle than the original shading pattern, right? Alright, nice and dark here. Okay. So I think it's time for us to smudge our page a little bit, make it nice and dark. And we're going to use that smudging that I'm doing here. I'm really dirtying my hand on the page. Uh, I'll show you here. So you can see how dirty this is. Look at that. Look, nice mess, right? But this is awesome. This, this graphite here allows me to smudge my page. And then I can erase that and use it as uh, drop shadow or, or uh, cast shadow. But we, before we start erasing anything, we're going to draw in our uh, leaves here. We need some really nice leaves to complete that plant coming out, of, growing out of the boot. Another leaf. Leaves are, depending on the plant, of course, essentially flames. If you've ever drawn a candle and the flame on top of a candle, that's exactly what these leaves are, right? or a water drop, a water drop with two points, a point on either end, or even eyes, uh, human eye shapes or some animal eye shapes are like this as well. So if, if you know how to draw an eye or you know how to draw a, a flame on top of a candle, well, you essentially know how to draw leaves as well. Those basic shapes are repeated everywhere in the world. And when you figure out where these shapes belong, when you draw, then it becomes easier to draw. Let's fill in this leaf. Just like that, we're gonna add some lines down the middle here. Give it a leafy feeling. A little bit of detail on around the edge here. Like a sawtooth, I guess. Sawtoothed edge. And then this leaf, color that in as well. This one too, don't leave them out. He'll be unhappy if he's different. <laughs> All right. So the next step is we're going to erase some light patterns here. We, we can tell that there's a nice hole in the boot there underneath. So we're going to add some white. I'm going to smudge a bit more. I don't think it's dark enough. And then with my eraser, I'm going to erase the cast shadow that my boot is making on my surface. And you can see what I get there. It's a pretty cool effect. That's something just, uh, you know, came off the top of my head. So I felt like doing this. You know, as you draw, as you're drawing, you're going to smudge your paper. Might as well use it in the artwork itself. So careful not to erase the shoelace. And there's the heel, the cast shadow to the heel of the boot. And we're going to taper or gradient that erasing. So I'm going to apply less and less pressure on my eraser as I'm erasing here. And that way I'll be able to bring that sort of white to the light gray. And then I'll stop erasing here. And then it'll be a nice gradient from white to gray on my page. Be a little bit more of a triangle under here. All right. A little bit here to remove. I think I'm going to use my electric eraser for these little sections. Love this tool. It's awesome. Ask for one for your birthday. Or for the holidays. Or for any time that you're supposed to get presents. Ask for an electric eraser. It's an awesome present. It's not a video game, I understand. No, it isn't, but it allows you to be creative. You make your own stuff. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit more shading here. Feels like I need to darken this section of the boot. 
Well, that's one thing that's cool about drawing is it doesn't use up electricity. I'm using my brain power here and my hand power. And yeah, I've had to eat maybe an apple to power me through this um, drawing this morning, but it's a lot of fun. It doesn't require any, any electricity. I have sunlight illuminating my page, nice natural light, and I'm drawing. Whereas video games and all that stuff uses up electricity and your brain matter. So why don't you draw more? Draw more, get away from those screens, leave those mobile phones, smartphones, and, and tablets, put them away, sit down and draw, and waste less power. And what's cool is these can then be great presents that you can give to your friends and family. Nice little gifts. Oops, sorry. Move the paper there. Let me reposition this stuff for you. And I highly recommend drawing to everyone. Everybody can learn how to draw. All right, I'm going to add the a line here to the surface where the boot is lying on. Add some lines here. Just like this. Boom, boom, boom. And last but not least, the signature to top this drawing off. Well, there you have it. Another drawing well done. You know, coming from an idea that I just had while transplanting a plant. So, you know, it goes to show that you can draw anything you want at any time you want. And any idea is a great idea as long as you're drawing it. Thank you for being there today. It was a pleasure to draw with you. We'll see you next time on another episode of Drawing with Paolo. Take care now. Bye-bye.